Hello and welcome to a game development tutorial on how to make your own simple piano app in Unity. This video collection will guide you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide you with all scripts and assets as we go along the way. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets for this video there too along with plenty of other things and you can also join as a free member. So the game we'll be building is just going to be a simple app or a small fully functional piano and the opportunity to develop it further with the skills you'll learn along the way. We'll be making this game for free and it will cost you absolutely nothing as long as you put your mind to it. So who is this tutorial for? Well, it's going to be aimed at newcomers to the game development world and app development world, as well as intermediate developers. And even if you're a veteran at making games and apps, stick around to see how we tackle things and how easy we can achieve the desired effect in this rather unique game development series. So this first tutorial we'll explore how to get Unity on your PC, we'll explore the hub and we'll get acquainted with the engine interface itself and start inserting game objects. So how do you get Unity? Easy, unity.com and download the hub. What is the hub? The hub is this. So you can see mine, I have a couple of projects running at the moment. Yours will look similar to this, if not empty, if you are indeed brand new to Unity. So what do you need to do to get going? Simple. You need to head to installs and you need to install the editor. And what that is, is the engine itself. So if you click up here and install editor, you'll be able to install the latest stable version of Unity. Now you don't have to use the latest stable version of Unity, you can use any version you want. But I would recommend using one that Unity says is the latest stable. So what do we do then? Well, we go to projects and then we add new project up here. We're going to be doing this in 2D. So we'll use the 2D built-in render pipeline. You can then name your project over here, anything you want. So it can be my piano, piano app, whatever you want, the location where you want to save it. And then further down here, you can have the option to connect to Unity Cloud or use the version control. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to connect to the cloud or use version control. I tend to have both of these unticked. And if you are connected to the internet, you can indeed select your organization, which is just your login. So to use Unity, you do need to have a free account. So once you click on create project, after a couple of minutes, you'll be presented with something that looks like this. So what is this? This is the Unity engine. It's a very default layout, and it is very similar to a lot of other engines that you may have come across over your de uh, game dev journey. So Let's go through a couple of these things. We don't need to use everything, but we'll go through the things that we do need to use at the moment. This over here is the hierarchy. So this panel here is where we store all of our game job objects in text form. So for example, we currently just have a main camera and you can see if I select it here, it will select it over here. What is this big view here? Well, this is the scene view. This is where we develop our games. And you can see at the side of the scene view, we have a couple of different little icons that we can use. So if we use the hand, we can hold down our left mouse button and move around. If we select this, we can move game objects on the Y and X axis. And on this, we can rotate. And this one is going to be very handy a little later on because it will allow us to manipulate objects a little better in the scene view. This is called the rec tool. Next, we have the game view. And at the moment, it is just a big blue screen. Why is that? Because there is no real game to actually play. But this is where we'll be able to play our little piano app in real time in Engine. So let's head back to scene view. And let's have a look over here at the inspector panel. What is the inspector panel? This is where we store components for game objects. What are components? Well, a component can be used to store information and make a game object do something. So in this case, we have the main camera selected and the components for the main camera is a transform component and a camera component. A transform component will exist on every game object due to its use. It dictates the position, rotation and scale or size. And we can set them on the X, Y and Z coordinates. So in this case, we can see that the camera position is 0, 0 and minus 10. Rotation is also 0, 0, 0. Scale is 111. 1, 1. 
So the size of 111 is a standard default size. We'll change a couple of these settings as we go further into the videos, but don't worry about these for now. And the camera component, because it's a camera, all this will do is this will add various things to your camera to make it work. I.e. you can see the background is currently really nice blue. That can be changed if we want to. Uh, not every component can be used on every game object, but there are literally hundreds of different components that you can use. We'll use different ones as we go through the videos. Down here we have the project window. What is the project window? This is where we store all of our assets. So when we import some assets into our game or app, they'll be brought in down here and we'll be able to use them. And then we can then transfer them from the scene or into the hierarchy. And that's the basic building blocks of how we build games and apps. Next, we have a console section. And this is where we can see any errors that may occur within the game or within the scripts. We hopefully won't need to use this console. And the animation we probably won't use within this project. So that is the very basic layout of Unity itself. Is there anything else that we need to address at the moment? Well, yes, there is. If we go to File, and if we go to Build Settings, we can have a look here and see what platforms that we are currently building for. In this case, you can see, dictated by the Unity icon there, that we are currently set as Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, you could set it to Android if you want to, or iOS, whatever you want to build for, but anything you build in Unity can be ported to any supported platform. So it doesn't matter if you start building in Windows, you can port it to Android later on. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to build this for Windows, test it, and then you could import it and change it for Android. So we're going to use keyboard controls and touch controls within this video tutorial. So for now, let's leave it set as Windows, Mac, Linux, and let's close this. So we've learned everything we need to know that's important right now. What shall we do? Well, let's add our first game object. Let's go to game object. Let's go to UI. And let's go to Button Text Mesh Pro. If you're using an older version of Unity, it may not be Text Mesh Pro. Don't worry about that too much. They function the same. Uh, so because we are using uh, Text Mesh Pro, we do need to import uh, the essentials. So if you get this message, click on Import TMP Essentials. And all that will do is allow Unity to use Text Mesh Pro. Because you could still theoretically use it in the old way. But if not, you can just import that. Don't worry about the second one, we will not need that. So we can close that window now. And we can see our button looks rather large. So let's use our mouse wheel to scroll out. Let's also hold down our middle mouse wheel and we can change view like that and zoom out. So it's worth noting that this button is huge. And this is our camera view right here. And if we go to our game view, it's going to look like that. So keep in mind that the canvas itself is what is projected onto the game view. What is the canvas? Let's double click it. So the canvas is basically where everything is stored visually on screen if it is a UI element. For example, everything we're going to do in this tutorial series will be based on UI. So everything within the canvas is what we're going to need. So how do we make it so as the canvas fits our screen rather than look a bit strange? Well, if we go over here to Canvas Scaler and change constant pixel size to scale with screen size, and let's set a standard screen size that most people would use, which is 1920 by 1080. You could set it as 4K if you wanted to a little later on. And let's set the match to exactly halfway between width and height. So as it scales both sides, evenly and perfectly. And you can see the button is now quite small, very small. So let's now modify this button to be something, well, more sizable. So let's use our rec tool and let's zoom in, make sure we are set on button and let's drag this corner upwards to about there. So as it looks more like a key on the keyboard or piano, and it does. Let's slim it down just a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open the button itself. So if you click the arrow next to the button and where it says text TMP, I'm actually going to delete over here in the text component where it says button. So it's just a white face. 
So now it does generally look more like a piano key. And if we press play, what this will do is it will bring us into our game. So we can test this in real time. Now, the great thing about buttons is they're predefined to work on both PC and mobile devices. And what I mean by that is we don't need to do any extra coding for it to work on a PC or in mobile. So everything we test in the PC now will work just fine on mobile. And if we try clicking this button, you should hopefully see it flash gray. That means that our button is working intentionally. It's working perfectly as we need it to. Obviously, there's no code to tell the button what to do. That's something that we will get into. So we now have our first key set up exactly how we want. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to add in all the notes that we need for this piano, and we're going to start doing some C-sharp programming. So until that next tutorial, I'll see you next time.